Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing another Christmas movie this week, and it happens to be one of my favorite Christmas films of all time, along with many others that follow, but I saw this movie since I was five years old, called, simply, Home Alone. That's right, the movie that started it all, which became one of the highest grossing family comedies of all time. Yeah, starting with one of the biggest child stars of all time, back in the late 80s and early 90s, Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, who just came fresh from three films, or should I say four, because he had a cameo appearance in the movie Jacob's Ladder. And he was in the movie Rocket Gerberator, as well as See You in the Morning, and of course, Uncle Buck, which is also from the producer and writer John Hughes. Yeah, he's no longer with us, sadly. But it's directed by Chris Columbus, who gave us those other films. You guessed it. Um, Adventures in Babysitting. And then later on, we got the second movie that followed. Mrs. Doubtfire. The first two Harry Potter films. And Percy Jackson. Not to mention the movie Rent as well. This is one of my favorite films growing up. A story about a little kid named Kevin McAllister who wants to stay home alone away from his family because they've been treating him like shit. So apparently, you know, he just wants to spend home alone, you know, doing what he does best, you know, hang around at his own house, be very excited that he gets to do whatever he wants you know, until a lot of bad things start to happen you know, during that night. Yeah, you know, when he's already being haunted by two bumbling burglars, you know, also known as the Red Bandits, you know, Harry and Marv, and yeah, you know, both played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. Of course, he's also afraid of the old man next door, which turned out to be a kind old man. You know, after hearing all these these wicked stories, so now he gets to set all of, all these traps to to get rid of them until the cops comes. Yeah. That's the kind of movie I would definitely watch. And it makes sense because, you know, you do get this a lot in, in your own neighborhood and you want to stop it. Yeah. I actually remember seeing this movie growing up with, with, with my family. You know, I went to see it with my brother Jason, along with my mother and my father. Yeah. It was fun. We saw it at the Pacific Theaters in Glendale which is, at the time, long before the Americana, which now has the some feeders over there. We had the uh, single-sided feeders, while the Igorot Plaza, yeah, close to where we are, yeah, because I know we had two malls, you know, between the area, because that was the first uh, feeder that, that's a multiplex, and it's also owned by Pacific Feeders. We had a lot of single-sided feeders from different feeder chains. You know, the Capitol was from United Artists, the Glendale Twin and the Alex Feeder, which is now the most famous feeder of all time. You know, they're both man feeders. We had the Roxy. Uh, it used to be an independent provider called SRO, you know, Sterling, before it wants up becoming Pacific Feeders. And the two feeders, the Regency 1 and Regency 2, which originally was the, the Sands Feeder, and the Temple Feeder, which would later be called the U.S. Cinema were both independent operators before they wound up becoming Pacific Feeders. Well anyway, I saw this at the Regency 1. And I, the, it was the same feeder where I went to see Back to the Future Part 3. I think I saw Part 2 as well, but yeah, I think I saw both of them. Because I know the first movie came out uh, after I was born. Yeah. And um, a lot of films have played over there along with the many other feeders that follow. But anyway, this was the movie I went to see and, and I had a good time seeing it. I was so happy, I was excited, I was laughing my socks off. It was just so hilarious. And I, I really love this movie a lot. And I, I would watch this constantly even when it's on TV and, <laughs> and just never get tired of it. And I'm just happy that I own this DVD. I know they have it on Blu-ray already too. And, I still have the VHS tapes of it also, but I will get the Blu-ray someday, along with the second movie, because that's also my favorite as well.
Yeah, I, I really love the second movie too. Um, despite the fact that it got recycled, it doesn't matter. I still enjoy it. I mean, the difference is, you know, he got stuck in New York. You know, he was lost and he's trying to find a way to come back. But but at the same time, he was he was having fun already by you know, staying over at, at a hotel in New York before a lot of bad things was happening while using his father's credit card <laughs> and his money too so that's like wow this is the, the DVD edition the family fun edition that I picked up uh, back in 2009 uh, when the blu-ray was already released uh, I didn't buy the blu-ray but that's okay because I had to get this one it costs a lot less and had a slip cover like so it, which was really cool so you can even see the back and they're both the same too you know, with the uh, the DVD included <laughs> there's only one disc and it has tons of extras um, on the back as you can see They're right here tons of extras not something you expect from the first movie but since it's very popular it deserves extras yeah since the original DVD didn't have any other than the trailer however I wish the second movie had more love because that's one of my favorites also. So yeah. Now I'm going to get to my review so I can talk more of this film and get right to it. The movie stars Macaulay Culkin along with Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, Catherine O'Hara who went on to do shows like SCTV and, and had appeared in many films. In fact, surprisingly enough, she even teamed up uh, with Joe Pesci in another film earlier that year called um, Betsy's Wedding you know, the one that was directed by and also the star by the way <laughs> by Alan Alda from MASH Robert Blossom has been best known for his role in Christine he's been in a lot of films even back in his old days John Hurd who was in the movie After Hours also with Catherine O'Hara yeah kind of ironic isn't it since they wound up in this film Devin Redtray, who played Buzz in this film, yeah, he was a complete jerk. He later went on to do, do the movie Dennis the Menace, as well as appearing in, in an Apple Jacks commercial with uh, Aaron Schwartz from Heavyweights and The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, he also went on to do the film Sarah Gates with Bruce Willis. Yeah, I never thought that was him after all this time. Yeah. Michael C. Morona. Best known for his role as older Pete in The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Hilary Wolf, Angela Golfos, Jerry Bandman, you know, who has been in some other stuff. Um, Jared R. Cohen, Santa Moses, Kieran Cogan, which happens to be Macaulay Cogan's brother. And he's been in a lot of films too, including Big Beat Goes Down, as well as. You guessed it, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Anna Skrowski, Kristen Minter, and John Candy. Yeah, making a, a surprise role in the film as Gut Polinski. It's written and produced by John Hughes, and it's directed by Chris Columbus. So let's get to this wonderful Christmas classic. The movie begins set on a beautiful third story house in Renekka, Illinois. The McAllister family, including Peter and Kate McAllister, along with their eight year old son, Kevin, who's already being you know, ridiculed by his siblings and cousins, are all played by John Hurd, Kevin O'Hara, and Nicola Cogan, already getting ready to be packed up for the night before their flight to Paris on a Christmas holiday. But soon all of this had become a, a bigger problem once he started to have a huge fight with his older brother Buzz, who's played by Devin Betray, who was a complete jerk to him. And that's what leads to a, a bigger disaster when, when he knocks him right, right in the near where all the milk and, and the Pepsi and, and all the pizza goes around. Yeah, he wants it being sent to the third floor of the house, which where he finally wishes that his whole entire family would disappear yeah since they've been treating him like shit all this time yeah no kidding they even call them you know you're so helpless 
We have to do everything for you. Yeah, as that one girl said. Yeah, what a bitch. Anyway, uh, during that night, a power outage had reset the alarm clocks and the entire power, which causes the family to overslept. But in confusion, they wound up rushing to take their flight on time, only to find out that they're very unaware that Kevin is being left behind until they're already on board to Paris by taking the American Airlines flight. So once they were in Paris, both Peter and Kate had desperately tried to book a flight home in search of him, but they've all found out that all the flights have been canceled within the next two days. So the clerks had put Kate on standby for any possible seat opening, while the rest of the family had goes to their relative's home in Paris, you know, trying to see what's going on. So meanwhile, Kevin winds up waking up and to find out the entire house was empty, so no one was there. So he basically just, <laughs> he gets to finally have his own freedom by doing whatever he wants, such as watching Angels with Filthy Souls. Yeah, remember this scene, the one where <laughs> just a, a film noir of, of a guy who goes around killing that that guy named Snakes yeah with the Tommy gun and he says keep a change you filthy animal <laughs> while he's eating ice cream and all this other junk food <laughs> yeah and and he's also pretending that you know everybody was there and and so on and so forth unfortunately even with all the freedom that he has it also turns into a dangerous situation when he's actually afraid of the old man next door was known as Old Man Marley, as we saw early in the film, you know, shoveling some snow uh, with a big shovel. And he's played by Robert's Blossom. And I have to admit, Old Man Marley did creep me out when I was a kid. And especially with that one scene in the film, was when Kevin went inside the store just to buy a Colgate toothbrush, only to find out if it's approved by the American Dental Association. Well, Old Man Marley finally came along and suddenly we found out that his hand was bleeding. Yeah, it was already been covered up. And Kevin was trying to escape from the man while holding a toothbrush on his hand. And he ran, well, he ran for his life until he's being chased by a cop only to find out that he's a shoplifter. Yeah, even at the end he says, I'm a criminal. Also, there was another scene when he went to to the supermarket just to buy some more groceries yeah now they this is something interesting about the scene was that if you watch the trailer of the film you notice that they had a different actor you know telling all the same questions that uh, the checkout lady had said in the movie I was amazed they didn't show that scene in the film so now I knew they did some major changes I don't know who the actor was in that film although technically speaking he might be the actor you know, who's in several pictures, so. But that also leads to another big problem, too. Because now he has to deal with uh, t two bumbling crooks, also known as the Wet Bandits, named Harry and Marv, who, who their plan was to to go around to burglarize all their bacon homes, including the Murphy home, only to find out that pretty soon they're going to be going next door to the one that the McAllisters live. What they don't even know, however, was they even thought that, that all the parents that came back from Paris just for Kevin to fool them into it after they they met um, you know, while Harry and, and Marv were inside the band, you know, which is a plumbing band, by the way. Of course, earlier in the film, Harry did disguise himself as a cop, you know, just sneaking around the place. Yeah, because you also saw his gold tooth right there. And not only that, you know, <laughs> Kevin even knew about him you know, somehow. Well, anyway, he's already being heard that during uh, Christmas Eve, you know, they're going to be planning on, on hitting on the McAllister's home. So that means, you know, Kevin is already going to be ready to set some traps for them so they can so they'll definitely be stopped in order to protect him and the house 
But meanwhile, Kate is getting a flight to the United States, only winds up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He tries to book a flight to Chicago, but once again, they were being booked and refused to accept the situation. He's already overheard by Gus Polinski, who is a, the lead member of a traveling polka band that's played by John Candy. So he offers her to travel along from Chicago all the way to, to Milwaukee in a moving band, which is a budget moving band, which he happily accepts so that way they can take her all the way to Chicago so they'll be able to see her son. So. Of course, on Christmas Eve, you know, after all this has been going along, he wants up at church where once again old man Marley had came along. You know, he was just watching the the children's choir. But of course the main reason why old man Marley came is to see her granddaughter who's the little redhead girl. Now I'm not using the Charlie Brown reference to this, but that's okay. Now we all know the different side of the story. Well, even though early in the film, you know, you know, Kevin was being afraid of the guy. You know, he was lucky enough, you know, he got to talk to him, you know, telling about his problems. And even when he mentions about going down the basement and he spotted the furnace, acting like he was about to attack him. I know that one scene he did actually said, Shut up! <laughs> also the fact that now he has his problems as well about that he couldn't see his son because they both had a huge fight so that's the main reason why he, he couldn't be able to be able to see him and his granddaughter you know, Kevin decided to make an advice to, to him to finally make up to all this uh, all this misunderstandings that they've been going for because you know. they couldn't get along at the time you know, even old man Marley finally gets his advice to what he thinks that's cool though because you know at least Kevin knows what they were doing so you could tell that he, even though he had some problems, you know, dealing with what's going on with his family, deep down inside, he really loves him. So anyway, once he finally arrives to his own house, just to prepare for all the traps that need to be set for the book, for the burglar, for Harry and Mark to finally arrive, they arrived to right, and <laughs> and <laughs> little did they know, they got exactly. They definitely got the taste of their old medicine once they finally <laughs> try to get into the house and and winds up being <laughs> bombarded by all of Kevin's traps. Yeah, they're all getting already being slipped out with inside the stairs. You know, Marf is trying to <laughs> try to get into the basement and he had to take off his <laughs> his uh, socks and shoes off. And suddenly, you know, with all that tar, he started walking in and. And one of the stairs had a needle inside, yeah, and got cut off. Yeah, and then, of course, also, you know, Harry wants up, uh, up getting shot in the nuts <laughs> with the BB gun, while Marv got shot in the head. <laughs> he also wants up um, <laughs> getting blur torch uh, on his head, and yeah, you know, wants up slipping to the ice from the stairs, and <laughs> even the. Uh, Try to open the doorknob, which had a, a letter M on it, <laughs> and and all this other stuff that that happens to them. Until Kevin finally wastes through time and and went straight to the Murphys' home, which has already been f over flooded uh, due to the fact that Marf had uh, left the water running from the sink, and, and then once he finally made it, yeah, you know, Harry and Marf had <laughs> had finally arrived and and trap Kevin in the house until finally old man Marley you know, came along and knocked them out with a big shovel uh, and then the cops arrive and arrest both of them so now Kevin is finally safe at his own home waiting for you know his mother and all the rest of the family to come back home to see if, if he's okay so once uh, <laughs> once Kate finally came on Christmas Day, along with with the rest of the family, when they took a morning flight, things turn out all right for Kevin. And now <laughs> he gets to see outside the window that the old old man Marley finally got to see his granddaughter and and his son. You know, once again, 
That is until the end when Buzz found out about his room being destroyed and he screams, Kevin! What did you do to my room? <laughs> and I really enjoy this movie a lot. It's such a funny film, hilarious. Yeah, all all the traps that they had in the film were were amazing. Yeah, the, the, considering that this is the very first film, prior to all the sequels that follow, especially the second movie, this one really had something that they can deal with. I mean, it, it makes you feel like you just want to stay home alone and do whatever you want while your family's away, you know, e even by accident. Because, you know, since they've been treating him like shit, you know, during the beginning of the film, you know, deep down of it, at least he knew that after all of this, you know, he still loves his family, despite of what's going on. Even though they did also consider him to be annoying and, and a pain in the butt, <laughs> I think I, I would probably deal with with him over the rest of the family because to me they're they were more of a pain of the ass so I couldn't blame Kevin for that and Buzz is, is a complete asshole too because always picking on his brother and he's always saying a lot of stupid things he yeah he even made a list prior to this because you know he doesn't even care if he's worried about Kevin he's an idiot there's no doubt about it he lies all the time and, yeah just to get him in trouble go figure However, uh, Macaulay Culkin did an awesome job playing Kevin. I mean, this is the the right choice for him. You know, he knew that he memorized all the lines that he did. I was amazed for a child actor to actually memorize, like like other child actors would. I mean, sometimes even most child actors will will be struggling, you know, most of the time with the the script, even if they had to do a lot of changes. But this one was a very smart script. It had a lot of witty dialogue that they put into it, sort of in that tradition of other John Hughes films. It worked, because this one had a lot of slapstick into it. I mean, I know uh, the movie First Ruler's Day Off had that. I mean, there was some slapstick, mostly focusing on the, the principal. But this one had plenty of slapstick, where you get to see, you know, the wet bandits, you know, getting... <laughs> basically getting what they deserve you know they wind up uh, being part of uh, Kevin's traps <laughs> wow I and mean, that's just hilarious to see how this one goes and who couldn't forget the scream that Kevin makes whenever he gets scared yeah he's always screaming like this ah! or like this as you see in the movie posters Yeah, and Joe Pesci, you know, did an awesome job from playing Harry, which this is interesting considering that this is the actor who wants up in all these Martin Scorsese films. You know, he always keeps playing, you know, a second fiddler, always cursing a lot, and does all this crazy things that it's amazing that Joe Pesci can want to play in a role this different because, he, you know, he's trying his best not to curse. Yeah, because if it wasn't for that, though, then this movie would wind up having an R-rated, which wouldn't make any sense either. So. Because it's meant to be a family film, and, and it's fun. I mean, we don't want that to happen. Especially with a thousand kids coming along seeing this movie. <laughs> Daniel Stern, you know, different turn from him after the one years. You know, since he's already narrating all this stuff as an adult, Kevin. Wants up playing a burglar himself who's tall, but he wants up getting all the action. <laughs> but I always love the fact that he's always afraid all the time, and yet, well, sort of. <laughs> there was one scene in the movie, you know, prior to taking his socks and shoes off, you know, walking through the tar, and, you know, he wants up trying to get inside the window, and, and suddenly, you know, he crashed into it, and Wants up stepping on the Christmas ornaments. Already his feet is probably bleeding by now. Once he started doing that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I remember that scene where. You know where Harry's already been f filled with fetters. And, and then Martha's already coming in. And they're saying. What the hell did you take your shoes off? What the hell did you dress like a chicken? <laughs> That's so funny. I love all the chemistry between the two. They're, 
they, they definitely work together at, as a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they really are professional burgers, no matter what. Um, and also, Catherine O'Hara um, did a great job as well, you know, playing the mother as well as uh, John Hurt as the father. Yeah, they were both in the movie. Um, they were actually both in the film After Hours. So it's kind of ironic to see both of them in, in a different movie you know, prior to that other film from Martin Scorsese. Now we see the difference. Yeah, there are a lot of great cast too. Uh, John Candy did a great job also playing uh, Gus uh, Polinski. Um, interesting surprise too, considering that this movie was actually shot back to back with another film that Chris Columbus had actually did and I forgot to mention. Well, only the Lonely, which Macaulay Cogan actually had a cameo appearance in that film too. So now we know <laughs> there are two different films coming out. You know. But nevertheless, um, yeah, considering how underrated Only the Lonely was, uh, this movie was became a huge hit. You know, they knew they expected that it was going to be one, since Macaulay Cogan was a new star you know, prior to Uncle Buck. Yeah. Everybody was good. Um, it's it's a fun movie. Um, I I rec I would definitely recommend this movie. I I love the second movie too because it was also fun. You know, this time he gets stuck in New York and so on, and things goes completely wrong prior to this since he's having his freedom over there. But and of course the traps are even better too as it follows because <laughs> you know what happens to them. Yeah. I'm going to do a movie review on that one too later on, but with that, but I do recommend Home Alone, especially uh, during Christmas. I mean, I, I would watch this any time on Christmas, especially on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and even on TV as well. So if you get a chance, buy the film. You, you'll never get tired of it. I, also, to mention this, I love the score that's done by the composer... John Williams, the, the same man who composed a lot of films, including Jaws, Star Wars, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Indiana Jones, you name it. Um, he, I, I love his wonderful score that he did, especially with all these scenes involving the, you know, the family and and all the Christmas songs they mix into it. I, I, it was just so dreamy and amazing, and even the opening of the film, you know. It was just so dreamy the way they did it. I, I love all, the, I love the music that he that he composed. And, you know, it's just it's such beautiful. Well, anyway, um, that's Home Alone, the very first film, original, and simply the best. That's for sure. And of course, Macaulay Culkin did became one of my favorite actors prior to that. Because after he did Home Alone and Only Lonely, he went on to do films like My Girl, the second movie, of course. You know, although I really didn't like The Good Son. Yeah, that one sucked. But he also later went on to do Getting Even with Dad, The Page Master, and Witchy Rich. So those were cool. But, nevertheless, check out Home Alone and see for yourself. I give Home Alone five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye. And also, have a safe Merry Christmas. And keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs>